Hi, this is Ken of Wrist Innovations, and I've scoured the YouTube universe for all the upgrades out there for the Bamboo Lab 3D printers, and I've selected my top 10 upgrades, which I have implemented. So let's take a closer look. The last upgrade is from me, so you will want to see the video to the end because you won't see this upgrade anywhere else. Tell me about the top 10 Bamboo upgrades. Number one are desiccant trays and desiccant modules in the AMS. The first one is a two-part upgrade and it involves the AMS Bamboo Lab automated material system. I found this clever design from Roland Deschain that allows you to replace the packs of desiccant with desiccant beads. The trays have a two-piece lid to make it easier to fill the trays with the desiccant beads. The nice thing about the beads is they change color when they are saturated and you can dry them out in a microwave and then reuse them. The second part of the first upgrade is a design by Thomas 63847 that allows you to insert three desiccant holders into the front of the AMS. The thing I really like about this design is you can mount a humidity cage and easily monitor the humidity and temperature in the AMS without opening it. The second item is this PTFE extruder bracket. I ran across this bracket design by our Angry Badger. This is a remix from an upgrade from Bamboo Lab to address some filament issues entering the extruder. This allows a more gradual strain relief for the PTFE tubing. When it's installed correctly, it should swivel on top of the extruder head. Number three I call Let There Be Light. This next upgrade addresses how hard it is to see inside the printer when you're making parts. Although the camera is nice to watch prints, sometimes I just want to look through the door. It's really hard to see through the tinted glass, and there's only one small LED strip, so it's quite dark inside. This upgrade from Jacardi involves printing a riser frame and a TPU gasket, and then installing an LED strip. They angled the LEDs in a 60 degrees down, so the LEDs shine down onto the build plate. They also added a light shield as part of the TPU gasket, so you aren't staring into the LEDs when you're looking through the top of the glass panel. This does require some soldering because I cut the LED strips into four pieces, one for each side, because it was too difficult to fold the LED strip around the corners. This particular LED has a remote control which really works great. It has its own power supply, which was what I was looking for. There are some designs that connect directly to the Bamboo Lab electronics, but I didn't want to complicate my life in case something went wrong with my installation and I damaged my printer. Here I am installing the LED frame assembly on top of the Bamboo Lab X1C. Next, I add the TPU shield, which I printed in four pieces. Then it's just a matter of adding the glass top back. This LED assembly comes with a remote control and you can set the LEDs to 100%, 50%, or 25% power. And this makes a huge difference in being able to see inside the printer. Number four is this simple scraper that can be used for any printer to remove parts and calibration strips from the build plate. Item five is this poop bucket. There are many designs out there for poop buckets to capture the filament waste that's generated during the Bamboo Lab printing process. Every time the printer starts a print, it purges the filament, as well as every time a color change is made on a multicolor print, so the printer creates a lot of waste. What I like about this design from Cellarlop is that it's large, so it holds a lot of waste filament, and it wraps around the side of the printer, so it's easy to see from the front if it's getting full. Number six is this Y-splitter for external spools. If you have the AMS, not all filaments can fit into the AMS. Bamboo Lab doesn't recommend to put TPU filament into the AMS because it's so flexible. Also, they don't recommend cardboard spools, and some other filament manufacturer's spools don't even fit into the AMS. This Y-splitter design by Ed Johnson is a clever design that allows you to feed filament from an external spool without having to disconnect the tubing from the AMS. I also like that he uses pneumatic connectors for the Teflon tubing. I added my small improvement of my own design to allow the filament to move more smoothly through the Y-splitter. I made a detailed video on that and the link is in the description below. Number seven is this cereal box dry box. 
This cool design by Build It Make It at builditmakeit.com uses a cereal box to make a dry box for an external filament spool. My friend made some changes by separating the desiccant box from the rollers and he added a screw to keep the lid on the box. I have more details regarding this build in the same video that has the Y splitter design. Number eight is this Bamboo AMS Disconnect tool. You probably have seen versions of this design before, but this is a great design from Jody to address what I believe to be a small design flaw by Bamboo Lab. This tool has two purposes. First, the tool works great to disconnect the tubing from the back of the printer. It also has a second function to depress the latch to the cable connector so that it can be unplugged. I've never seen a design of a polarized connector where you couldn't just use your fingers to disconnect it. So I feel this is a small design flaw by Bamboo Lab. Number nine is this filament spool rewinder. As I mentioned before, not all filaments from other manufacturers fit inside the AMS. You really have two paths to solve this. Number one, modify the AMS. Or number two, transfer the other manufacturer's filament to a Bamboo Lab spool. There's a great design for modifying the AMS to hold smaller spools of filaments, and it's called the Hydra Enhanced Bamboo Lab AMS by Humebeam. My only concern with this is that it involves some major modifications and reassembly of the AMS. Also, there was some controversy on whether this change would void Bamboo Lab's warranty. For these reasons, I went down the second path. This spool rewinder is a perfect example that three heads are better than one. The original spool rewinder is by Miklos Kazesli, and I think he came up with an ingenious design. He posted this on printables, and there are quite a few parts to print and assemble. Then, bird to brain designed a way to motorize the rewinder so you didn't have to manually crank it or use a portable drill to rewind the filament. After that, Diplomator made even more improvements and turned it into a very reliable system. Here are the upgrades that Diplomator made to improve the design. Number one, on the main body at the lower shaft, they added a third bearing and made the lower axle shaft into one piece, which really improved the reliability. The original design of the shaft was in two pieces, and at least for my prints, the fit was loose and the shaft bowed which didn't allow the teeth to mesh together on a consistent basis. They also added another bearing to the middle shaft, which helped the middle gear to rotate more precisely. They improved the filament carriage sled by adding a bearing and added guides for the filament carriage. They also added threaded inserts for the filament holder, which makes it much easier to adjust with your hand. They also added covers with the threaded inserts to the top of the spool holder, which keeps the spool from hopping out of the main body. They also added some bearings to the spool holder to make it spin more freely. At first, I didn't think this was absolutely necessary, but I found out that when the Bamboo Lab spool becomes heavy with the filament, it causes the DC motor to bog down, and in some cases even stop. The bearings reduce the friction, so now that's not a problem. They also added mounting holes to the main body, so now it's easy to mount it to a base plate. They also modified Bird to Brain's motor housing to screw it down to a base plate. Bird to Brain's motorized feature is also really cool. The wiring was fairly straightforward, and I was successful in wiring up the electrical assembly on my first try. The overall assembly works really well, and I thank the three contributors who created this project. Now let's see how long it takes to transfer a spool. It's about three minutes, plus or minus, which isn't bad. Number 10 is this build plate vertical holder, which is wall mounted. This build plate storage rack is my design that was loosely inspired by this design by Alvin Pan. I wanted to store my various build plates, but I wanted them to hang on a wall so they wouldn't take up precious space on my workbench. I have this French cleat system for various tools, so I designed this rack to hold five of my build plates. It can even hold the replacement sheets for the cool plate. It easily removes from the French cleat, and if my printer was farther away, I could bring the rack to the printer, and it stands upright and also on its side. You could also just screw this into the wall if you wanted to. 
If you wanted to mount it to French cleats, Chris from A Glimpse Inside sells French cleat strips and his link is in the description below. My next video will be the first in a series titled Adventures with 3D Printer Man. In the first episode, this superhero will rescue a hairdresser from her disorganized hair studio. And when that video is ready, that link will be here. In the meantime, you may want to watch my most popular video, which is, which is better, Prusa Mark IV or the Bamboo X1 Carbon? And that link is here. Thanks for watching. Bye.